Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part two of my sample alchemy tutorial series. In the previous video, we talked about calling up presets, how to use the sources, and how to use the various play modes in sample alchemy. In this video, I'm going to focus on importing your own samples and editing and working with those samples inside of sample alchemy to create your own custom instruments. These can be samples you've found on the internet, samples you've made yourself, or maybe a sample or a loop from Splice, or you can just simply import loops and samples from Logic's loop browser. So first, let me show you two ways to get samples inside of Sample Alchemy. The first way, and probably the slowest way, is you can simply just create a software instrument. I'll go ahead and reset that software instrument track. And then what I can do is load up Sample Alchemy as a software instrument right on the channel strip. And then what you can do is just drag and drop in the sample. So that takes a lot of extra time because you're having to create the instrument from scratch. A better way and a quicker way is to simply drag the sample onto the track header area. And you'll see there's now an option for sample alchemy. And what this will do is it'll instantly create a sample alchemy instrument out of that sample. So it analyzes the pitch of the first note of the sample or loop on input and then maps everything to the correct pitch. In my project, these samples are all in different keys, but we'll be able to use them together because Sample Alchemy automatically adjusts the pitch and automatically maps them across the MIDI note range. So for this one, I'm going to use loop mode. And remember, in loop mode, you only get two sources, A and B. And one way to drag around your sources is you can put the snap mode in off. And in this mode, you can just freely move these around. But if you want these to snap to the beat, you can change the snap mode to beat. And you'll see that the points in the loop and the location of the sources snap to a sort of internal grid that is tempo synced to your project tempo. And just to make this sound a bit more like a pad, I'm going to pull up the attack time a bit. And then I'm also going to pull up the release time a bit. And I'll also add some reverb. I really like this black hole reverb from even tied, but you can use any reverb you like. Now, the only problem with this pad instrument is that because the original sample contains a lot of different notes, it's likely that we're not going to be able to play full chords with the pad. And you'll hear that some of those notes are kind of dissonant because of the abundance of notes in the original sample. So generally speaking, if you want better pitch control over sample alchemy instruments, it's best to use samples that stay mostly on the same note. Although with loops, this is kind of hard to come by. So for this next example, I'm going to use this 808 sample, and this is just a single note. That's what the sample sounds like on its own. Let's drag this down into Sample Alchemy. So in classic mode, this bass is just going to kind of play back uh, as a one shot sample. But let's say I wanted to give this some motion and make this sort of like a moving bass line. I'm going to put this in arpeggiator mode. I'll pull in source B. And one of the cool things, uh, the cool transformative things about the sources is that you can actually change the type of synthesis being used for each source. So by default, this is granular, but you can also put this on additive or spectral, and you can make each source a different type of synthesis, therefore imparting a different tone on the audio. So for example... I'll make A spectral, and I'll make B additive. We're 
clipping quite a bit there, so I'll go ahead and pull that down. But now I have this sort of moving arpeggiated bass line. Now I already have a drum beat in here that I can pull in. So I don't really need this bass to function like a kick. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull up the attack time a bit just to soften the front end. And I've also added the compressor on here just to kind of control the dynamics. And I'm also using it for the soft distortion. Okay, so let's move on to another instrument. Next up, I have just an individual sample. And this is what I was talking about before. When you have one note, you have a bit more control over the pitch. So let's try to create like an arpeggiated synth sound with this. I'll drop it into Sample Alchemy. So as is, just using classic mode, I've got some chords down here. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, so it's just playing the chord. One of the things you'll notice too is that there's a lot of empty space at the end of the note, and there's also a bit of a gap at the front end of the sample. So what you can do is you can click trim here. You can actually trim up the sample. But one way you can trim up is you can snap to the grid or you can turn this off and you can freely uh, trim this. But another mode is you can use transients and I can snap that first trim point to the transient of the sample. So I'm getting rid of that little gap at the beginning of the sample. And then what I can do is do something like this and isolate only the part of the sample that I want to work with. Let's put this in arpeggiator mode. Let's pull in all four sources. And if you think the volume of the sample is a little low or maybe too high, you can click here, go to your global controls, and there's an option in here to control the volume trim. Now this will get set automatically when you import a sample, but if you wanna roll it up or down, you can do that and it'll control the input volume of the sample. And again, if I wanna make one of these sources a little different than the others, I can change the synthesis type. So for example, maybe I'll make B additive here. Let's make D additive as well. Remember, you can adjust the level of each source using the source mixer here. Now, let's say instead of doing the arpeggiation here in Sample Alchemy, maybe you just want to use Logic's arpeggiator, but use a different mode other than arpeggiator. So maybe I'll use something like Bow or maybe Loop. I can do that too. I can just add the arpeggiator on the track rather than relying on the arpeggiator within Sample Alchemy.
So I've got a bit of like a melodic lead slash arpeggiated synth line now. Okay, at bar 25 here, I want to create a different type of bass line. So I have another sample here. This is like a, a bass hit here. Sounds like this. Again, it's just a single note. So let's drop this into sample alchemy. And let's see if we can create like an arpeggiated rhythmic bass line, similar to what we did before, but maybe with a bit more motion to it. Okay, so I'm in arpeggiator mode with all four sources in. Let's turn off the source snap. I'll just go to off. So right now, these are being arpeggiated in eighth notes. Let's make that a little faster. Let's go 16th notes. Another thing you can do is for each source, there are other controls here, other common controls, the pan, coarse tuning, and fine tuning. So you can adjust these things for each source. So maybe I want C and D to be up an octave. So I can select C, pull up the coarse tuning to 12 semitones, and maybe I'll do the same thing for D. Let's soften up that attack a little bit. It's a little too clicky. I've made the uh, A source additive just to give it a bit more of a synthetic sound. Maybe I'll do the same thing for C here. Let's pull that all up an octave. pull that one note down an octave. Okay, lastly, I want to use this sample here. It's like a siren sample that's sort of slowly drifting out of uh, key or out of tune. Let's pull this down to sample alchemy. And let's create sort of like a creepy sort of siren lead line with this. Okay, let's bring in some more sources. Let's not snap this to the grid. And let's put this on bow mode. Let's change up the bow rates so that some of these move a little faster and others move a little slower. And the other thing you can do is in addition to the coarse and fine tuning, you can also set the pan. So maybe I want some of these to be panned left and right. I can do that. And maybe I want these up an octave as well. We can pull this up by 12 semitones. It's a little harsh. Let's try that in spectral mode. And to make this kind of more of a soft effect, I'm going to pull up the attack time a bit. And I'll also pull out the release time. So there's a little bit of overlap. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to click on my global settings, go to global, and I'm going to change the polyphony to one. So it's only going to play one note at a time, although this will go up to 32 notes. And let's add a bit of a glide between the notes, like 200 milliseconds.
Okay, and I think you guys know what's coming next. Let's add some reverb to this just to give it a bit more depth and to smooth out some of those artifacts. Let's try this down an octave. Yeah, so maybe I'll do down an octave here and then I'll do up an octave for the rest of the musical example. Yeah, with Sample Alchemy, there are basically unlimited possibilities with what you can do with source samples. Like I said before, generally speaking, if you want better pitch control, you want to make sure that the samples are like an isolated single note. Although that doesn't mean that you can't use full loops. It's just that you may find yourself doing more one note at a time MIDI parts when using loops. Whereas if you use individual notes or individual samples you can get away with using chords. So that wraps up part two of my sample alchemy tutorial series. In part three, we're gonna jump down into the synthesis and source parameters. And we're gonna dive into these in a bit more detail. And then in part four, we'll jump into modulation effects and using the motion controls. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.